Uh, it's nice to meet everybody. Um, Gregory Solo, president of Young Nails. I'm fortunate enough to be out here at uh, Nails Magazine to show you how to hook your client up with the sugar skull, yo. I'm going to be uh, doing the design on top of an acrylic uh, coffin uh, shape and uh, let's get ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna take Mission Control paint and going to use a combination between pink and white to create this really nice pastel background. And the, the, the great thing about the paint is as I work it through the surface, the, the intensity, the pigmentation is, is going to blend in really, really well. I didn't make it, I just kind of pre-mixed it onto my brush and I'm just working it over the surface so that we're going to create this nice pastel color. And once we've created that nice pastel color, we're going to set it inside our light for about 30 seconds. So I'm gonna do a quick flash inside the light for 30 seconds, and then we're gonna to continue to work. So this is on top of acrylic, and after I was done finishing my acrylic, before I went into Mission Control Paint, I put a coat of Protein Bond on the surface, which is this stuff right here. I applied Protein Bond onto the surface. That way, the gel is going to bond extremely well to the surface. Okay. Once we've set the surface, what we're going to do is we're going to use our micro detailer, which is this brush right here, really, really fine needle. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of trace out the skull. And what I do is I just want to show you guys here on my palette when I'm working is I don't glob it on like this. I'm going to run my brush through, right, a, like a really thin area. That way it fills up the tip of my brush with enough product so that when I trace out the actual head of the skull, I could get into really, really fine lines, right? So I'm going to try to get here on the opposite side, as you can see, just to kind of connect where I left off and come down and trace out. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to load up the tip of my brush again, just with a real fine amount and, and start from where I left off and then come down right, and kind of create a little bit of a jawline right there. And then what I'm going to end up doing is loading up my brush and then starting from the outside and then just coming straight across on both sides. So the best part about this is that nothing is set in stone yet. But what I've done is I've managed to actually trace out the head of the skull. The best part about the mission control paint, as you guys can see, is it's not going to run anywhere. It's going to stay in the place. And, and, and if you're not happy with certain areas, you could always take a slight brush and then come in and, and just kind of detail away any type of loose lines as you see before you actually freeze it inside the light. Now, once we actually have the design down, the best part about the Mission Control Paint is I could literally go in for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. After five seconds, as you can see, the lines are frozen. I don't have to worry about them getting away from me or running because I have full control of the paint. So once we actually uh, build out the actual head, what I'm gonna actually do is do the same thing with the eyes. But before I do that, I'm actually just going to come down with a really, really thin line down the center, right, just to kind of set a balancing point. And then I'm just gonna kind of put a widow's peak in from the top here, keeping my brush vertical. And then that way, when I come around with the tip of my brush, I could actually kind of start the eyes on both sides. Another thing you can actually do is apply a little bit of paint onto your fingernail or on the top of the surface. That way you don't have to keep on reaching back and forth from here to here. I could literally just touch the tip of my thumb and then come back and then reattach the, the tip of the brush to come down and build some nice oval eyes as you can see on one side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite. I'm gonna touch the tip 
And I'm going to start off from where I left off and then continue to roll all the way down with a really, really, really fine line. I'm going to turn the finger to the side so that I can continue where I left off. The best part about the Mission Control paint is the intensity of the paint allows me to come in and, and paint out my eyes. I don't have to worry about the product running away from me. And then what I'm going to actually do is load up my brush again and start from the center and paint in this kind of detailed skull nose effect. I'm just going to do one thin line across the center, come in and then paint a few little cobwebs with the very, very tip of my brush. Inside the eyes, I'm going to trace out a little floral pattern. With the tip of my brush, again, I'm not trying to use the side of my brush. One of the things you can do is you can work in a figure eight. Don't try to overwhelm the eye because you're working in a really, really small area. And you notice the tip of my brush is actually vertical, so it allows me to come in and use that really fine needle, as you can see, to kind of trace out the floral pattern. I know a lot of you guys out there have crazy artistic skills. You're going to be able to throw in some mad, mad detail, but you see how I'm actually able to lay in the floral pattern just like that? I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. One of the things I like to do, again, with the tip of my brush is come in and, and trace out one and then try to go around in a figure eight pattern. So once we actually have that done, I'm going to come in and I'm going to freeze it for five seconds. All we're doing, one, two, three, four, five. It goes off and can continue to work. I want to be able to fill space. One of the things we can do before I actually start filling color is adding another floral pattern to the back end here. And you can see that with the tip of my brush, I can actually come in and just add some minor detail around the back. Boom. And then you can come in and you can fill it in with color once you're done. So I have that on the outside. What I'm going to do is start filling in some space, load up my brush. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Not that heavy, but let's just go ahead and start filling in the tip so that it actually looks quite opaque. Now, one of the things I like to do around the eyes is take the back of a, of a gel brush because of this point right here. And then what we're going to end up doing is taking blue dots and adding color around the eyes. You could choose any color you want. Remember, you're working with a really, really small space. So, you know, to, to sit there and like paint in perfect lines is going to be a task. There's a lot of people out there that have those mad skills, which is great. But again, if you could use any type of a, a, a tool like a dotter or a gel brush, you're going to be able to fill space all the way around the edge just with a light touch so we can fill that space just like this. And let's go ahead and freeze that. Again, the best part about this is I don't have to wait forever. Count to five, three, four, five, and I can continue to work. I want to take the inside of my brush, taking a little bit of the coral color and use that coral color to paint in the floral patterns, as you can see. With the detailer brush, it's going to allow me to come in and really start to give life to the sugar skull. Don't worry about the black outline. It'll kind of hide behind all your color once you're done, but it gives a little bit of definition once we're done with the floral uh, eyes. Let's go ahead and freeze it again. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna come out. I'm just gonna try to paint with yellow to the inside just to give it color. You can see how bright everything becomes. It's just like paint, so you're going to be able to come in and add a lot of, of detail with this incredible uh, gel product. And you have to remember, you're working on such a, a small space, you can see how intense the color is. We'll do the same exact thing, freeze for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, come on out. I found that it's actually easier to just come in and paint in a few teeth right here in front with the white because of its, its intense. I use the line as a guide. Come in and freeze it. One, two, three, four, five. 
And then what we can do again is take, you can see, I could take the paint on top of my thumb and then just right over the surface, I'm just going to try to paint in as a fine line as I can and then use the tip of my brush to actually start throwing in some detail. And then what we can do is just kind of trace around the edge just like this to fill in space. Let's go ahead and freeze it again, five seconds, one, two, three, four, five. Taking just a slight bead and just kind of pulling out, adding a little bit of effects to the edge. All right. And then again, adding a few dots around the, 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 the skull itself. It's taking the back of the brush and using the tools to, you know, come in and, and add just like slight details around the edge. All right. And filling the rest of it in with color. What brush are you using I'm, again? I'm using, a, I'm using a micro detailer, which is uh, the new gel brush that comes inside the Young Nails Mission Control Kit. It's literally like a needle. I can come in and in such a small space, I could literally take the tip of the brush and fill in small areas. It gives me precision control over everything that I'm doing, which I really, really love. Let's go ahead and freeze this. How do you recommend cleaning your brushes? Um, it's a synthetic uh, hair, so you would use swipe uh, or alcohol to clean your brush. When it actually comes to your gel brushes, something larger, same exact thing, you would want to use swipe. Last but not least, I'm just going to come around the edges and add a little bit more intensity to the actual skull itself. Just adds a little bit more intensity around the edges. You know, the, the, the gel doesn't move. We're going to go ahead and hit it up with a few seconds. The last cure, I would always want you to get it in for a full 60 seconds. Let's go ahead and take that off. At any point, if you wanted to add a little bit more color, you're going to be able to fill in and, and create a lot of amazing detail. We just go ahead and freeze it, and we're going to put finish gel over the top, and we're done. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and take finish, which is our non tack sealer, and we're going to apply a really nice coat over the surface just like this and you can see what it looks like on top of the coffin nail so we're going to set this for a couple minutes we'll do 60 seconds so that you guys can actually see the shine but i totally recommend if you're using finished gel please cure it for a full two and that way you get this absolutely insane tack free lustrous shine and uh that is how it's going to end up.